there is a set of techniques and technologies collectively referred to as genetic engineering or biotechnology. And the kind of problem that um, these uh, technologies are oriented towards solving um, go something like this. So let's say here is a genome. And in this genome, we have a gene in, in wild type. And this gene that gets transcribed and translated and it makes the green protein. However, there is an individual who is mutant and uh, a mutant for this gene. And this could be a patient or a, a, a crop um, And they're mutant and so they they don't make the normal wild type protein and what you would like to do to fix this problem or treat this condition is you can um, either supply another copy of the wild type allele of the gene so here's the mutant and I can put inside this genome another copy which will produce the wild type protein and the mutant allele or the mutant copy of the gene is still there except um, it doesn't produce any protein. And so by doing this, we can correct um, um, the the problem or we can give new abilities to uh, crops for example and that's what um, GMOs uh, genetically modified organism crops are where you have supplied those uh, uh, plants with um, um, a gene and a gene product or a protein that they normally don't have and that gives them some new capability. An alternative to um, uh, supplying the gene is actually to not supply the gene but instead create the the wild type protein um, outside the or organism so in some other organism and simply provide that protein from the outside externally and and this protein is called recombinant protein for reasons that will become clear um, um, in a bit but you can basically make synthetic protein and um, supply it to the the individual who lacks a wild type allele of uh, the gene and so the approach on the left where you introduce a new copy of the gene into the individual's genome this is called transgenesis and then this new copy makes the protein and so it reverts the individual from a mutant phenotype to a wild type phenotype or the other approach is recombinant proteins where you make or synthesize the protein um, outside of the organism and then supply it to the organism. Um, a, a very common example of the use of recombinant proteins is in the treatment of uh, diabetes where patients need insulin and insulin is a human protein and uh, in, in modern um, um, re with modern recombinant DNA technology you can make recombinant insulin 
synthetic insulin uh, and then um, patients can inject themselves with this insulin uh, to control their uh, diabetes. Now, um, there are several steps that one may take to um, go from a problem, a, a, um, a mutant phenotype that needs to be corrected or a new capability or ability that we want to endow an organism with to the solution of the problem, which is to be able to carry out the transgenesis or to manufacture the recombinant protein. Now, one of the most um, uh, challenging aspects of um, carrying out such projects is the fact that any particular gene is a needle in a haystack. And to appreciate why that is so, you know, a typical gene is, and let's use humans as an example, is about, uh, it is, its length is measured in, in um, uh, kilobases. So let's just say for the sake of argument, it's three kilobases long, a typical gene. Now the human genome is three billion base pairs long. And what that means is that one gene is about one millionth of the human genome. And so before we can um, supply the gene or uh, the recombinant protein, we must first identify or isolate the gene that's responsible for the particular phenotype that we are um, interested in. And so um, we may start with some hints about the gene. So for example, we may know what protein it encodes. We may have parts of the amino acid sequence of that protein. We may have antibodies against the protein that um, this gene encodes, or we may have some idea of its rough map location. Now, with these hints, the first step is to um, isolate the gene. And by isolation, we, we mean that we would like to identify the part of our genome, the DNA, for the coding sequence of the gene and have large numbers of copies of the gene's DNA. And once we have um, produced uh, the, the DNA um, of the gene in large quantities, then we can carry out characterization, which means um, we could determine the DNA sequence, which is what is the sequence of the nucleotides that make up uh, the gene. We could um, study RNA properties, the mechanism of the gene's action, um, the, the nature of the mutation, and so on. And once we have um, characterized um, how the gene works, um, then we can proceed to transgenesis or manufacturing the recombinant protein. Now, one thing that's really important in carrying out any of these steps is 
that you cannot work with a small amount of DNA. A cell has only two copies of um, um, the DNA of a gene that corresponds to just um, atograms of DNA. Whereas if you want to work with that gene's DNA, do any experiments with it, uh, like characterizing it, sequencing the DNA, you need uh, uh, amounts like nanograms. And therefore, you have to amplify or make many copies of the DNA. And you may have to amplify in any of these steps uh, a billion fold in order to have an amount of um, uh, DNA that is workable. And therefore, um, amplifying or copying DNA is central to biotechnology and um, genetic engineering.